Hey, how's it going, everyone? Just want to do a lesson on um, Daniel chapter 7. So I'm planning to do a live stream tonight and just um, kind of catch up with people if they stop by. But um, debunk this notion that there's one individual, one man who's going to be the Antichrist pop up and wow the world and all that. So Daniel is the book that I've seen that all these 501c3 Christian prophets um, lean on for that narrative. I haven't seen any evidence of that anywhere else. And, um, you know, feel free down below to, to share if, <clears throat> where, uh, you know, people go to support that absurd narrative. And so I was just reading through Daniel and then I just noticed here again, and I didn't do a video on this in the past that Daniel seven supports the sequence of the end times. And so anytime I see this, I just tend to, you know, fire up the video and then record it as I read it and then support it. And so, the cool thing about the Bible is that, um, you know, it describes, you know, history or like prophetic things using symbolism, and then it does it in different ways in different books. And so in Second Ezra, um, I've done lessons on this, that this also reaffirms the sequence of the end times, Second Ezra 11 and 12. And um, it uses um, like uh, an eagle with wings and then all that kind of stuff. And then... Um, you know, in verse uh, Second Ezra uh, eleven five, for example, and I looked and behold, the eagle flew with his wings to reign over the earth and those who dwell in it. And so, it's talking about an eagle in that case having dominion over the whole earth, and then it uses eagle on purpose, in my opinion, to explain that it's America because that's like our quote unquote national bird. And so, uh, it uses an eagle there, and then um, you know, different things rising up on its talons and all that kind of stuff. And um, you know, and it also says that there are heads that pop up. So similar language that is going to be used here in Daniel. And so, you know, I just want you to know, people to know that the, you know, different books are describing the same thing that's happening. There's going to be a consolidation of power to one, you know, horn or whatever you want to call it, um, you know, and then it's going to have rulership over the entire earth. And my position here on this channel, that's America, because that's Mystery Babylon, described in the book of Revelation. And so, it's a place where its philosophies have permeated the entire earth and their evil philosophies. And so <clears throat> modern day Sodom and Egypt. And so Daniel's going to go through the same thing and just describe the power structures in a different way, you know, just different using different language in this case, using like beasts and stuff coming out of the sea. And so, but it's all the same. It all ultimately leads to one place. However, that's described that's going to have dominion over the earth. It's not one person who's going to like have the joysticks over the, <laughs> over the whole earth and all that kind of stuff. That's absolutely insane. That's literally impossible anyway, because American presidents has changed, you know, regularly and all that. So um, <clears throat> it's not one person. And so it'll be very clear in Daniel and Ezra and everywhere that this consolidation of power is, you know, a particular nation, you know, that's able to do this and um, all that kind of stuff. And then um, we'll see that here. And so this this chapter definitely does not speak to like one person popping up. And so I'm going to go through the rest of the chapters and just do sort of a high level read through and just let people know that <clears throat> that might have been a chapter referring to one person but it's in the past and so anything that's prophetic looking to the future it's talking about a nation that has jurisdiction over the entire earth <clears throat> and an evil one for sure and so uh, i'm going to read daniel 7 and it's called daniel's vision of the four beasts and so, uh, you know, just know that these four beasts are described elsewhere in Daniel. I believe it's Daniel chapter 2. And then they describe, you know, historical empires, you know, Babylonian, Medo-Persian, Grecian, Roman, and all that. And so just know that it's this also, again, supports reincarnation, this this chapter, indirectly. You have to sort of be a, kind of a, um, you have to sort of look for it and understand it. It's a bit encoded. But um, all these historical um, kingdoms, the spirits that were running those kingdoms they're here on this earth now the bible says in revelation 1 7 all eyes will see him even those who pierced him and so that leadership's not changing they're just updated with different technology and potentially to slightly different regions and all that so just know that and so um this language is describing all those spirits who are now in modern day being distributed across the earth and they're all in alignment you know and they're all one you know working together towards um you know, being antichrist, you know, being against God. And so just know that. And so this is describing power structures that have existed in the past that are now here on this earth that are now spread across the entire flat earth. Just know that. So this is Daniel 7, Daniel's vision of the four beasts. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel saw a dream and visions of his head as he lay in his bed. Then he wrote down the dream and told the sum of the matter. 
Daniel declared, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea, and four great beasts came out of the sea, different from one another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. Then as I looked, its wings were plucked off and it was lifted up from the ground and made to stand on two feet like a man, and the mind of a man was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second one, like a bear, it was raised up on one side. It had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth, and it was told, Arise, devour much flesh. After this, I looked, and behold, another like a leopard with four wings of a bird on its back, and the beast had four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this, I saw in the night's vision, and behold, a fourth beast. This is the important one. Terrifying and dreadful and exceedingly strong, it had great iron teeth, and it devoured and broke into pieces, and stamped what was left with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it, and had ten horns. And so, I don't. It doesn't make sense to me, especially the times that we live in now, to speculate what exactly like this country, like this horn is Germany, or this whole horn is something else. So, um, to me, this is all symbolism to let us know that in in Daniel, for example, it's describing it as four beasts coming out of the sea. And so, there's going to be in God's like from his vantage point, four major groups of spirits that are, you know, governing, you know, the, the affairs of the world. And then there's going to be one final one that is going to be exceedingly strong. And I, and I believe it uses great iron on purpose because it's going to talk about like military might. <clears throat> it's referring to military might. And so that's, that's America, you know, and so just know that. And so um, it's going <clears> to <throat> then describe how that fourth beast got its power. And then it uses that with crowns. And so just know that. But this fourth beast that's rising up that's quote unquote exceedingly strong is America. And then this crown represents <clears throat> the process by which it got the power to do all these things. And so just know that. That's what, that's what uh, Daniel's going to see. <clears throat> so now <clears throat> Daniel's seeing this vision. And then now this is where the sequence of the end times comes in. <clears throat> the sequence of the end times that I teach that I believe I received on the first day of this year, which is never violated anywhere and definitely not here, is... Um, Christ returning with his angels to take away his elect. 1260 day period of God's wrath administered, you know, by the two witnesses, which are plagues in Revelation 15 and 16. And then America's burned. And then Christ returns with his elect and the angels to have this battle in Armageddon to fight against the remaining people on the earth who will all have the mark of the beast. And so that's a sequence, you know, that, that is taught in Revelation and supported everywhere and then also here. And so now... Daniel's seen that vision and now here the sequence starts and big, not a big surprise to me. The first thing we're going to hear about is Christ and his angels because that's needed for salvation. The Ancient of Days reigns. As I looked, thrones were placed and the Ancient of Days took his seat. So my teaching is that Christ and these UFOs and all that, that is Christ and his angels, you know, doing things, you know, surveying the earth and like getting ready for what is about to happen. And so this is literal. Christ took his seat, you know, uh, on one of these UFOs. Thrones were placed... <clears throat> A throne is another term that is used to describe these these UFOs. And so these these um, vehicles that, uh, you know, God uh, moves around on. And so this is literal. Thrones were placed and the Ancient of Days took his seat. <clears throat> his clothing was white as snow and the hair on his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames. Its wheels were burning fire. And so, you know, how we describe people like, hey, nice wheels at your car. God has his set of wheels <laughs> and it's not funny, but like it's incredible technology that we don't even know of. You know, that's why all these sightings are more and more frequent now to prepare for this, this event. And so it's his quote unquote throne, you know, what he's sitting in is, is a chariot, you know, it's a quote unquote UFO. A stream of fire issued and came out before him. So these things can kill, um, zap people. A thousand thousand served him. These are angels and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. So it's going to be just an array. The whole sky is going to be literally covered with um, Christ and his angels and the two witnesses. The court sat in judgment and the books were open. So there we go. We have the first reference to Christ appearing with his angels. Good start. I looked then because of the sound of the great words that the horn was speaking. This is America. As I looked, the beast was killed and its body destroyed and given over to be burned with fire. So now next thing in the sequence, America's burned. And so check. As for the rest of the beast, their dominion was taken away, but their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. And so that's important language that's consistent with Revelation 11, verse 15. And the angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever. And that's 11, 15, 26, 26, 66. 6. That's the judgment uh, right after the judgment of um, America. And so that language is very, very consistent 
and not surprising that, uh, that that's the case. And so the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord. So this is the translation of the kingdom that um, that's happening um, at the end of Revelation 11, which is the sister chapter 16. And here it's the same thing. And so again, to me, it's incredible. The language that Daniel is using is exactly the same as in Revelation. I'll read that again. As for the rest of the beasts, their dominion was taken away, but their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. And so the rest of the people on earth now are going to fight against God and they all have the mark of the beast. And so um, just know that. And so uh, now it goes into a son of man is given dominion. That's the title. And so um, verse 13, I saw in the night visions and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there come one like a son of man. Now it's talking about Christ returning again. Interesting. And so this is the way it is. And he came to the ancient of days and was presented before him and to give him and to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people's nations and language should, ser should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdoms are one that shall not be destroyed. And so now this is Christ destroying everybody on the earth who has the mark of the beast and then he's going to set up an everlasting dominion, his kingdom here on earth. And so that sequence holds and so it will never be violated. And so this just goes into detail in different parts and focuses on different things, predominantly Christ's his appearance and reappearance and then America being burned, but it's it's the same. You know, it will never, again, it will never be violated. I'm certain that that's the way it's going to go down if the Bible is true. Reading on, we're going to get more detail about this vision um, to help us understand who it is. Verse 15, as for me, Daniel, my spirit within me was anxious and the visions of, of my head alarmed me. I approached one of those who stood before there and asked him the truth concerning all this. So he told me and made known to me the interpretation of the things. These four great beasts are four kings who shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever. And so these four great beasts represent a one world government, you know, across the earth. And then one of the, the final beast is going to be America is going to have military might. You know, just know that. That's the way it is. Verse 19. Then I desire to know the truth about the fourth beast. So Daniel wants to zoom in on that fourth one because it probably scared him the most and scares all of us as well. How much power that America has over the entire flat earth. <clears throat> Then I desired to know the truth about the fourth beast, which was different from all the rest, exceedingly terrifying, with its uh, with its teeth of iron and claws of bronze, and which devoured and broke in pieces and stamped what was left with its feet. Uh, that, to me, also could re reflect, like, um, tanks and, like, military stuff. Like, it's just moving and, like, going everywhere and, like, literally in everybody's backyard, which is, again, consistent with language in, in, uh, in Revelation about this uh, place called Mystery Babylon, where it's going to be in everybody's waters, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And then obviously on their land as well. Um, and, you know, all these wars, Persian Gulf War and all that kind of stuff, it's the same. <clears throat> and about the 10 horns that were on its head and the other horn that came up before which three of them fell. And so that is again, language that's consistent with Second Ezra's where America's power is derived from Britain, you know, and the pound being the old reserve currency. And then now it's the US dollar. And so, um, Britain's power diminishing is also prophesied in Second Ezra, and this is being told here. And so, if you look up what are the constituent parts of um, Britain, it's England, Scotland, and Wales. And so, that's what it's talking about. You know, it's like these horns, which were basically broken off and then kind of consolidated to the power of here in America. And so, just know that. And so it's not referring to one person wearing a crown or anything like that. That's insane. Um, this is a this is a nation that is going to have the power to do all these things, teeth of iron and claws of bronze and trample people under feet and all that kind of stuff with its feet. Um, and about the 10 horns that were on its head and the other horn that came up and before which three of them fell, the horn that had eyes and a mouth that spoke great things and that seemed greater <clears throat> than its companions. So this horn is not a person <laughs> that like has eyes and speaking great things. It's again, it's representing... Uh, a power structure, a consolidated power structure on earth. As I looked, this horn made war with the saints and prevailed over them until the ancient of days came and judgment was given for the saints of the most high. And the time came when the saints possessed the kingdom. And so this quote, one world government is going to actively attack the saints and they're worldwide. So this again tells us that this horn that's going to speak all these blasphemies has to have rule over the entire earth. And that has to be America if we're living in the Andes. It just has to be. It's obvious. And so this again proves that it's a one world um, power and it has influence over the entire world, which is also said, like I said, in Revelation, where its philosophies have spread and permeated through the entire earth. And so and prevailed over them until the ancient of days came. And so they're going this system is going to be successful for a very brief period of time. And the Bible says 
if those days were not cut short for the Alexei, this system would prevail and just win and just kill everybody. Uh, and, you know, uh, the saints as well. And so, or they would take their own life. And so uh, just know that. And so this again is consistent language with everything else in the Bible. Big shocker. I'll read that again. As I looked, this horn made war with the saints and prevailed over them until the ancient of days came and judgment was given for the saints of the most high. And the time came when the saints possessed the kingdom. And so um, that's also language that tells us that Christ returning and taking away the saints of the most high is not the same time that the saints are possessing the kingdom. It says, and the time came when the saints possessed the kingdom. So it's a time afterwards. And so Christ does not know the day of his first return, but he knows the day of his final return because it's 1260 days later. So just know that. <clears throat> Thus he said as the fourth, so now he's going to get understanding on this fourth beast. And so you don't have to get too caught up in like all oh, those three horns and this horn is Germany or whatever. To me, I mean, people do that. That's great. But this is helping us understand, again, completely consistent with Second Ezra's, this uh, America, you know, and, and its foundation and how it, quote, raised up and how it's going to be the leading um, nation in the end times is going to have power over the earth, military might, and then where God is power, you know, governed by Europe and um, all that kind of stuff. And so just know that. <clears throat> Thus he said, as the fourth beast, there shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be different from all the kingdoms, and it shall devour the whole earth. Again, exactly the same language as we read in Second Ezra. It's just using like an eagle and, and talons and all that kind of stuff. So it's exactly the same thing. And um, this is amazing to me. Um, and it shall devour the whole earth and trample it down and break it to pieces. As for the ten horns out of this kingdom, ten kings shall arise and another shall arise after them. He shall be different from the former ones and shall put down three kings. He shall speak words against the most high and shall wear out the saints of the most high and shall think to change the times and the law. And so one of the major things that America is doing is not even just changing the law, but ignoring it. And so um, God's laws and all that kind of stuff. And just, you know, we're told to not get any kind of engraving or get poked with anything, but like vaccines happening all over the place. And that's one of many, many things that um, this, um, uh, this, fi this final beast will then go and spread that philosophy worldwide. And we see that happening literally right now with Corolla. And they shall be given into his hand for a time's time and half a time. And so this is the first half of the final seven year period here on earth. And but that the Bible says that time will be cut short for the elect's sake. And so it's no one knows when it begins. We only know when it ends, when God takes away his elect. And so and then that starts another. The final second half of that is a twelve hundred and sixty day period. And so just know that that's the final quote unquote week. <sighs> But the court shall sit in judgment and his dominion shall be taken away to be consumed and destroyed to the end. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high. And so God's elect is the quote unquote government of the kingdom. Just know that that's what they're being groomed for. His kingdom shall be an everlasting kingdom and all dominion shall serve and obey him. And so that's uh, amazing. And um, here is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts greatly alarm me and my color changed, but I kept the matter in my heart. And so, again, this is an amazing chapter. It's, um, again, just shows us rising up of one nation that um, has power over the entire earth. And it's going to be dreadful, you know, and it's going to be, um, you know, uh, the Bible says when, uh, you know, evil are in leadership, people mourn and people are mourning across the entire earth because of the incredibly evil philosophies that America has spread throughout the entire earth. And it's not just the, it's obviously rooted in the money system and this uh, fiat money, but it's lots of other things, you know, just like what to value. And then, you know, Hollywood and all that. I mean, literally the list I can make for hours, but um, this is describing that structure rising up and then, um, you know, actively attacking God's saints, which are spread across flat earth. And then the Bible says that, God will burn that place because it's modern day Sodom and Egypt. And then the rest of the nations then will be like, we'll fight against God directly in the heavens. And so just know that. So Daniel 7, amazing chapter, completely consistent with the sequence of the end times. And um, hope everyone's doing well. Bye.